Dependent motion is an incredibly important topic in the study of engineering dynamics. Dependent motion is defined as whenever the motion of one particle depends on the motion of another particle. We run into dependent motion every day. The concepts of dependent motion are most commonly used when examining pulleys. Pulleys are everywhere and it is easy to imagine dependent motion in a pulley system. Consider this one. We can easily imagine how if we applied a force to block A, it would cause block B to move. This very fact means that we're dealing with dependent motion. In this video, we'll talk more about dependent motion for pulley systems, including what it is and how we can use it to solve problems in dynamics. Imagine we had a simple pulley system like the one shown. Let's mark the position of each block A and B relative to the top of the frame as X sub A and X sub B. Let's now try to find a relationship between the positions of A and B in the total length of the cable. If we wanted to express the total length of the cable in terms of X sub A and X sub B, we could write the following, XA plus 2XB equals C. C designates a constant because the length of the rope always stays the same. You may be wondering why we didn't include the rope around the pulleys themselves into the total rope equation. Let's pretend for a second that we did. If we did, our equation would be X sub A plus 2X sub B plus R equals C, where R is the rope around the pulleys. Since R is a constant, we can subtract it from the left-hand side of the equation to get X sub A plus 2X sub B is equal to C minus R. Since C and R are both constants, subtracting them results in another constant, D. Hopefully now you can see why we do not include the rope around the pulleys themselves into the equation. Since they're always constant, they do not end up affecting the equation for the total amount of rope. This equation is useful, but now let's imagine that the pulleys are moving. Our dimensions x sub a and x sub b are now changing with time, meaning that blocks a and b have a velocity. We can differentiate our original equation as follows. Differentiating x sub a plus 2x sub b with respect to time gives v sub a plus 2 v sub b, since the derivative of a position function is a velocity function. Differentiating our constant c with respect to time results in zero, as the derivative of a constant is always zero. We can differentiate velocities yet again to obtain the accelerations. Once again, taking the derivative of zero results in zero. Now we have three equations for this pulley system, one with the positions, one with the velocities, and one with the accelerations of each block. These three equations will prove extremely useful in solving problems with pulleys, as they provide a relationship between the velocities, accelerations, and positions of all objects on a pulley system at a given time. The hardest part of solving these problems will be developing the initial position relationships that you will differentiate and use to find velocity and acceleration. So let's practice an example. Here's an example problem. We are given frictionless collars A and B that are connected via a pulley system to block C. We are given two accelerations of collars A and B and are asked to find the acceleration of the block C. Let's start by marking the positions of A, B, and C relative to the bottom of the figure. Now that we have these positions, let's try to develop an equation for the total length of the cable at any given time. We have to worry about segments 1, 2, 3, and 4 of the cable. We can express segment 1 as being x sub a minus x sub b. We can express segment 2 as being x sub a minus x sub c. Finally, we can express segments 3 and 4 as being both x sub b minus x sub c. We can express the total length of the cable as being the sum of all of these. Differentiating this equation twice to obtain the accelerations, simplifying yields 2 a sub a plus a sub b minus 3 a sub c equals 0. We now have an equation that relates all three accelerations of each component of the figure. Since we already know a sub a and a sub b, we can plug these into the equation to obtain a sub c. Now we have our final answer. If we were given forces and asked to find an unknown force, we could use this acceleration relation to our advantage, since Newton's second law states that force is equal to mass times acceleration. Another way to examine pulleys, as well as numerous other problems in mechanics, is through degrees of freedom. A degree of freedom in a rigid body is defined as the number of ways it can move independently. In the case shown, the object has one degree of freedom. Since it's only moving left and right, it cannot move up or down or in and out of the screen. Determining the number of degrees of freedom for more than one object can be done with the following equation. The number of degrees of freedom of a system is equal to the number of objects in the system multiplied by the number of directions of motion minus the number of constraints. In the case of the simple pulley system we saw before, there are two objects that each have one direction of motion, and there is one constraint, the cable. Therefore, by our equation, the system has one degree of freedom. 
In other words, both blocks can only either move up or down at a given time. There is no left and right or forward back motion, and both blocks have to move at the same time. Pulleys have numerous advantages in the real world. Pulleys can provide mechanical advantage between the force applied to a machine and the force outputted by a machine. Consider once more the pulley system we have been examining. As mentioned earlier, we can relate the accelerations of the blocks by a sub a plus 2 a sub b equals 0. If we solve for the acceleration of a sub b, we find that it is half of a sub a. Because there is half as much acceleration in block b than block a, looking at Newton's second law, we find that the total force driving the acceleration of b must be half of the total force driving the acceleration of a. Because of that, the force required to lift b in this pulley system applied to a is only half of the force that would be required to lift b directly. Therefore, this system has a mechanical advantage of 2. To end, pulleys are an incredibly important aspect of mechanical systems. By examining a pulley system as shown in this video, equations for position, velocity, and acceleration of each component of the system can be found. This is of great use to solving problems and designing machines for mechanical advantage.